Hey, it's Bruce Feldman. Pleased to be joined by our guest this weekend, UCLA quarterback Dorian Thompson Robinson. Big game for the Bruins. It's their arch rival, USC. It's at the Coliseum. Dorian, thanks for joining us today. Oh, yeah, thanks for having me. All right. So last year in the game, got uh, emotions got a little hot at the end of it. I'm curious, as the leader of the team, how do you balance the emotional kind of input that you're going to be getting while still wanting to play with an edge? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I think just focusing on our job, uh, focusing on the team itself, uh, you know, not even caring what they got going on on their sideline or, or you know, what they got going on on their deal. Uh, you know, just trying to focus as much as we can on ourselves and what we got to do on each individual player that I think will be all right. I'm curious, you came at the same time as Chip Kelly starting his tenure at UCLA. Feels like you've been there a long time, right? And um, I'm curious, how have you seen the program evolve from year one to where you guys are now? Yeah, I just think the overall buy-in uh, of everybody collectively saying, hey, we're going to we're going to buy into what Chip has going on and what his staff is bringing to us and, and believe that what they're doing is right for us and that they're going to put us in the best positions to win every time and and fully believing that as a, as a whole entire 117 guys um, and all collectively just buying in overall, I'd say is probably the biggest step that this program's taken year to year, um, as well as just the, the, the brotherhood that we built being here for four years. My class is like you said, came in here with Chip, so um, you know, just building that brotherhood over the years and, and really being able to connect that way too. What has this year been like for you? You start out the year with that huge win against LSU. The Rose Bowl was rocking. I, I mean, I guess you didn't start out. It was the second win. But at that point, I feel like you guys got on everybody's radar. Then you had a tough loss to Fresno. It's been kind of up and down since then. And obviously the other day, you guys rallied a blowout Colorado and have a chance to finish this year on, on a high note. For you, like how what's what's been your kind of feeling of how this ride has gone? Yeah, you know, I've tried to stay even keel through all of it. Um, and you know, not let the highs get too high and the lows get too low. So um, you know, I think I've done a good job of that and trying to keep uh, everybody on that same page as well. Um, and so, you know, I think that's kind of where we're at. We've we've taken our lumps along the way, but um, I think we stayed the course. We we still Bought into what Chip and his staff has going on here. And, um, you know, everybody still believes that we can finish on a high note and believes that, you know, with the bowl win and, and with the, you know, winning out the rest of the season, um, you know, we can still hang our hats high and, and know that we gave our all and still made it out um, on the other end of it. So, what's it, what is it about this matchup against these guys that has seemed to bring out the best in you? Just the overall tradition. Uh, you know, you know, watching the game growing up, um, and just seeing those guys and how they got after it and kind of the overall just rivalry between the two schools and how it was handled throughout the week and, and all the stuff that goes on uh, between the two between the two schools throughout the week. So, uh, you know, I think just the overall experience of the game and, uh, you know, you know those guys on the other side, you grew up with them and stuff like that and uh, recruited against them and all that stuff. So uh, we, know, we know each other really well and, uh, you know, that's what's going to make the best of the game, so. Is it a is it a hate rivalry? I mean, you guys obviously, as you said, you know a lot of people on you know, over there. Like, how would you categorize it? Uh, you know, I think it's just that. Um, you know, we we dislike each other. Um, you know, we know we started to know each other so well that um, you know it kind of arched you to a point. So, uh, but it's all fun and games at the end of the day. We still got to go out there and play football. Um, instead of a lot of against each other and play so. Having been with Chip Kelly for four years, you obviously know his background, what he did at Oregon and then in the NFL. What are some coaching points that has, has really kind of harped on with you that you feel like has elevated you? Uh, I think just letting the game come to me. Uh, you know, that's so critical, especially being a quarterback. Uh, you know, finding the, the rhythm of the game, the speed of the game, um, and the, one of the most important ways and the, and the best way to do it is to, you know, let it come to you. Don't try and press. Don't try and force things. Uh, which is what I was doing early on in my career, uh, especially here at UCLA. So um, just things like that and, and uh, those type of pointers really helped out a lot. So, Coming from such a storied high school program as you did, Bishop Gorman in, in Las Vegas, lots of big time talent comes out of there. You were an Elite 11 guy, so you were on a big stage as a high school player as well as a high school recruit. 
what is something that you kind of learned once you've gotten into being college football and being a quarterback for quite a while now that maybe you really never considered or wasn't even in your mind when you got into it? Uh, you know, I'd say probably the footwork, um, you know, just the, the how important the details of you know, your drops and, and the timing and rhythm that your feet have to be with the throws uh, and the anticipation that comes along with it. It's really something that I had to learn once I got to college. You know, in high school, you're, you guys are wide open and you're playing with superstars on the outside uh, compared to the other corners. So, um, you know, a lot of guys are more wide open, so you don't really have to anticipate as much. And, you know, your O-line is blocking for seven seconds, so you don't really have to sit there, rest the throw and all that stuff. So I think just, you know, learning the real details of the game and, and especially the footwork. One of those guys on the outside who's been a, a real uh, difference maker for you guys has been Kyle Phillips. What is your rapport like with him? It just seems like whenever you guys need a play, you find him. Yeah, and just, you know, Kyle was one of those guys when we first came in as freshmen. You know, we clicked right away. Um, you know, he was real ball hungry, always wanted the ball. We always went out and threw, always got extra reps together. Um, and, you know, I was one of those guys that, you know, I throw every day, all day. So, um, you know, we be going out to the field. And, you know, coach would get tired of us at some points and, you know, tell us to go home. So, uh, you know, I think that's where all that chemistry comes from is, you know, because we got into it so early on. What do you think it is? That, I mean, he's not a particularly big guy. What do you think it is that makes him such a special player? He's real smart. He's real cerebral. Uh, you know, Kyle does the, the ins and outs of the game and, you know, he really studies coverages and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, when you know where space is going to be and you, you know how to find it, uh, you know, it's really easy to get open and he understands that. So. You're in a program right now that has had a lot of success last year in college basketball. That that team went on a great run. It seems like they're they should be a top five team again this year, off to a nice start. Any guys on, on your football team who you think, yeah, I think they could hang with them and go go play for the UCI basketball team? Oh man, uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, actually, a guy like Hudson, uh, our tight end, I think he could. He has some hops. He has some wiggle. Um, and then a guy like Colson Jankoff. Colson can hoop for sure. So, really? So he, I know this. Yeah. Former quarterback from Washington transferred in. Now he's playing a different position. I heard he has like almost a 40 inch vertical though, right? No. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's insane. What would Mike Martinez be like under the boards with those, those huge hands and those long arms? Oh yeah. Easy bucket. That's easy buckets for a guard. <laughs> easy. I'm guessing they don't want to play him or play some of the football guys at the risk of injury, though, at this point. No, yeah, exactly. We got enough guys hurt already. So, Being somebody who's been pretty visible on social media for a while, I'm curious, how have you embraced NIL? And, and what do you think a lot of people might not understand about how it's played out? Because there was so much talk about what it was going to be like or how it was going to be this or that going into the summer. Now that we've had, you know, four or five months of it, um, what what, what have your thoughts been on what it's actually proven to be? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's it's all dependent on how you use it. Um, you know, I think in some cases it could be very harmful to the player, and I think in some other cases it could be very beneficial and and uh, can be worth of use. And so, you know, I've been taking the kind of the, the in-between route of not using it as much and not really getting the deals and, and trying to go out there and look for stuff to sign and all that stuff, so. Um, you know, I'm more so focused on the team and uh, pouring everything I can into football and, and stuff like that right now. So um, from my experience, I can tell you it hasn't hurt or, or helped me. Um, it's just kind of been there. And, you know, I, if I need it out of my back pocket, you know, I may need some extra money uh, in the month or whatever, that, you know, I can use it. But if not, then um, I don't have to. So uh, I think that's that's where it's at right now. Your mom is a college professor. Like, what kind of resource is that to be as a college student to have somebody who's that's their livelihood and in, in, in terms of just you and not just as a student athlete, but uh, you know, it's it's very beneficial. It's very advantageous, especially for me at a young age, um, being able to really understand everything because she went through all of it. Um, you know, she went to she graduated from Michigan, so she was around that football team when they were winning. Uh, was always around the football players and stuff like that. So. Um, you know, she kind of taught me the game, taught me growing up and kind of what to look for and, um, you know, who who to listen to and who not to and, and what to say and what not to say. So, uh, 
you know, she was very beneficial to me growing up for sure. Have you decided if this is going to be your last year or is it, will this be your last USC game or you don't know yet? I do not know yet. No, sorry. How big of a deal would it be if this is to make sure you go out on a high note in the rivalry? Oh, yeah. I must have. Um, you know, I haven't won a game versus USC as a starting quarterback. So uh, it's definitely something on my bucket list I need to get done and I need to get scratched off. And, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to do it. So. You hoping for a game like uh, like your buddy Joshua Kelly had a few years ago at the Rose Bowl against him? Oh yeah, uh, you know, and you know me, I'm very competitive, so I want something even better. So, what is that? Four hundred yards for Sharper Hand and Britton Brown? What what would he be even better than that? Than that? Uh, uh, it'd take a lot, but um, you know, I think we can get something done for sure. All right, Dorian, we look forward to seeing you this weekend at, at the Coliseum. Big one for the Bruins against their arch rival. Thanks for joining us today. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you soon. Thanks.